Anyone fancy celebration? Good day, sirs! Have a nice day! <laughs> Have a nice day! <laughs> I've lost it! Wait a minute, it's Windows 10! It's Windows 10! We're going to look at Windows 10 today yeah. uh, as a developer preview. Um, we've got it on this virtual machine here. Paul and myself, we're going to look at it. So, without a further ado, let's do it. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to boot the virtual machine up. We've got it in Hyper-V today, which is using uh, Windows 8.1 and uh, we're going to boot it up in, in Hyper-V on there. Uh, I've got an external network created so the adapter's uh, able to get out on the internet so we can obviously use internet in the virtual machine. Uh, we're going to go through various different new features in the operating system and just generally take a look at what differences there are really. So here we go. So we've booted the machine up as you can see on the screen here. Uh, it's looking rather like Windows 8, the same sort of wallpapers and stuff. You can see there it's a technical preview. Um, you can see that we've already installed a few products on here just to test how it runs. And uh, the first thing we did was went ahead and went to Windows Update. So there are two new searches in Windows 8. You've got a bit like Vista and 7, the search bar here. So we just went for Windows Update in here. And obviously it, it will show it obviously in here. So Update. There you go, check for updates, takes us along to the updates page. There, I think there are 30 to do, and this is the, the 2nd of October today, so it's been out for pretty much 8 hours now, yeah. since it was released last night. Uh, 12 hours, sorry. Um, did that, check for updates, that's the first thing we did. Um, as soon as we did that, we noticed significant stability differences. Well, I did. Um, it hasn't crashed on me yet, so that's good. <laughs> so yeah, we've already mentioned that the first search, obviously, in the start menu here, as before, so um, with 7... Same sort of search there. Pretty nice new feature. Um, I'm glad they brought that back actually because it's made a lot different. The second search is sort of the search on the taskbar, and this is kind of baffling me because I don't see why you'd have two. I don't know why. I, I, it's, yeah, it's a lot slower. And it's slower, yeah. I mean, there's this one here, works really well. You can search for things instantly here, like, say, like Windows Movie Maker or whatever you want to search for. Instant. This one on the taskbar, it's a bit sluggish. I mean, you can, you can still search for things like Media Player. Um, yeah, you can see it doesn't really, really work. Um, I don't see the point in that yet, personally. Okay, let's move on. Second thing, um, we've noticed that you can now, I mean, that's bugged out as well. You can see that's stuck there. Next thing we've noticed is you've got, oh crap, Windows, <laughs> Windows 10's frozen, guys. Oh, it's frozen! Yes. It's frozen! There we go, it's back, it's back. It's all good. It's had a little bit of a, a bit of a brain fart there. Okay, so, next thing we notice is you've now got as of before, we had um, Snap, so you can have two windows simultaneously open. Um, let's say Chrome and Internet Explorer, or Word and PowerPoint, or, I don't know, Movie Maker and Media Player, whatever, uh, side by side. Now, uh, we've noticed you can have four four tiles, so one, two, three, four. As simple as that, it's pretty cool. Um, actually, this, to me, would make a lot of difference for like movie making, um, for like media usage, um, Trying to work out how to do this side. Let's have a look. How do we do this? How do we do this? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> it works one side. This is like a Microsoft <laughs> conference. <laughs> Come on. I mean, this is yeah, Microsoft. Con <laughs> this is not working, guys. Have an there we go. Yeah, it's in the corners. It's the corners. Ooh, is it corners? No. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it should be over the near the edge. Yeah. Oh, that's full oh. screen. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, this works. It kind of works. Um, <laughs> you can kind of have three and then one floating. Oh, so we can have three. We can have three and one full screen. That would do. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So that's that. Uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, that worked pretty well. Cool. Anyway, so that works. Um, gen, gen, you know, generally, um, most most of the features in Windows 10 work fine at the minute, even though it's a beta. Yeah, we love the new start menu. Um, love the tile features. It's um, when you yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> when you sign into your Microsoft account, the tiles become live a little bit like on eight um, on the Metro interface. You can still enable the Metro interface, by the way. Just to let you know. You go to um, Start menu on the Taskbar and Menu Properties, and just uncheck this box. Uh, click Apply. I, I believe it needs a restart to make that work, but yeah, you can do that, which is pretty cool. And obviously, you can you can turn off the live tiles and things as well. Okay, next thing we noticed is task view. So down here on the taskbar, there's a button that says task view. Um, it's a little bit like on the Mac OS, uh, Mac OS 10 and, and, and onwards, uh, where you could have 
Uh, was it Expose? Something like that. It was called, I believe. Yeah, uh, virtual desktops. Virtual desktops. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you could have more than one, multiple desktops. Um, you, you just click on this button. You can then see the active windows, which is really awesome. And obviously add a desktop, a bit like a Mac. It's, they've kind of copied it a little bit there, in my in my opinion. So now we've just got a blank desktop. Um, and obviously you can go back to your other desktop. It's it's kind of cool, I guess. Mm, yeah, it's nice. It gives yeah. you some fresh space if you've got multiple monitors or if, you, if you're doing lots of different things, you want to hide some stuff. Or oh, I'm just going to hide that game. There we go, it's gone now, you know. Pretty cool that way. Um, so yeah, really nice feature. Um, we've installed Office 2013 on this machine already, just to see how that runs. Um, so in the start menu here now, a bit like XP and 7, um, your apps are at the top, like as before, and then your... Um, aftermarket, so to speak, apps that you've installed yourself, obviously will then appear underneath. So obviously we've got Office here, let's do Word, 2013 here, professional copy. You can see that works absolutely fl fl flawlessly, there's no problems there. You know, that integrates nicely with, t with 10, they've obviously tested that. Okay. The next thing we sort of noticed was uh, File Explorer. So they've changed a few of the icons and some of the sort of extension, sort of, um, not extension, sorry, just the icons, so like the actual thumbnails. Uh, images. So in here, um, Explorer now, uh, you've got a home button, which takes you back to basically like all of the main, most common recent places that you go to. Um, and then obviously this PC has got a different icon. Uh, under network, you've got a, a bunch of nice new shiny icons that appear in here. Um, obviously we're on a large network here, so it'll take a few seconds to populate that. There oh, we go. Nice. So it looks quite nice, yeah. I like that. So all, those, all the Flat. computers. Yeah, it, it looks a lot more professional, I think. And obviously, if you scroll through, you'll see the printers as well, and any of the servers, I, I would imagine. Yeah, so there's some of the Rico printers, media player things that people are sharing, the Rico printers again, and the printers, kitchen computers, stuff like that. Pretty cool. Um, most of the other things are the same, like the general, um, my computer things. Another note, um, computer properties, exactly the same as 7 and 8. So when that appears in a minute, when it feels like it. Sometime today, tomorrow, in a minute. No, never going to do it. Right, okay, so I will <laughs> try that again. Oh, there we go. We've ran into a problem. We can't even get Explorer back. Okay, so that's something I'll have to fix. Uh, yeah, we can't get Explorer back. That's great. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. That's a feature. It's a feature. Oh, there we go. It's here. It's here. Oh, no, there we go. We've got 50 copies of it. All oh, right, oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it has little mind farts now and then when it just freezes and... and what the... What is it doing? Mate, I just want to use Explorer. Come on. This will force me to Ubuntu. Oh, I'm <laughs> Ubuntu! Oh, this is ridiculous. There we go. There we go. Here's system properties now. So back to system properties. Um, like before, identical really. Very, very similar. Um, your activations at the bottom. Your computer name and information's here. Part of the domain. Work group it's part of. System information. And then the version of Windows that you're running here. Um, anything under the, under the other menus here. and Other context menus are all the same as well. More or less. There's a few extra things you can set. But nothing worth mentioning for now. Okay, uh, next thing to mention, uh, Windows Media Player is exactly the same as before, so it's still on 12, I believe. So if I go to About Media Player, uh, 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 yep, it's on 12, so nothing's changed there, and that still works fine. Um, file Association, so I've installed Dropbox on here. Um, let's just pick a, a photo and a, a piece of music, so it'll still open with... Um, as before, Windows uh, Photo Viewer. Um, as default, it opens with photo the, the photo app. Um, I always change it to this because I just can't mm. stand it. The photo app just takes too long. Mm. Uh, as for music and things like that, they still open with the, the music app in the start menu, so audio up here. Um, I change that to media player, just a personal preference. Um, next thing to mention, um, yes, installation updates. Now, 8.1 and 8 had uh, a system where you installed a piece of software or a place to data stick in the machine, a memory stick or whatever, a removable disk, and you'd get a little window up here saying, what would you like to do with this device? That still happens, but it appears down here now, So if you, even if you install applications as well. So we're going to install Origin here. Um, it's obviously a gaming platform, um, but obviously we're not actually playing any games. We're just going to install the app to show that little window that appears. So we'll go ahead and do that. So just uh, default on that, install it. Nice fast operating system. To be fair, we are running an SSD, um, and we're giving this machine four gig of RAM, as you've already seen anyway. So it's pretty, pretty powerful, but it's, it's still a beta, so it's not complete. It's still a bit slow. It needs a little bit of TLC on it yet before it's ready to use. I wonder if they've moved that because then you can't get the charms menu up. Yeah, you can't. You don't get the charms menu now. That's something to mention as well. There's no, as you can see, the mouse down here. There's no charms menu, but in apps there are. 
So um, when you're in like this, this, let's say the store, which we'll go into in a minute, that actually has uh, a way of doing that. Um, so you can bring your mouse across and it brings the settings up for that particular app which is pretty cool in my opinion because then it, it hides it when you don't need it and shows it when there's an app available but we'll go on to that in a minute Come again. so rudely interrupted there by an, a, a, a support issue why do they issue. have students in school anyway? I don't know, I don't know. <coughs> who's a student? right okay so let's log in um, with um, our origin ID and we should see an app update um, pop up down the tray once it's running in the tray. I believe it's for everything. I don't know. We'll soon see. It's not logged in yet, so let's have a look and see. Guilty. Right. Um, oh, well, that didn't really give me an update. It's supposed to come up down here. It did for Dropbox. I'm not sure why it didn't for Origin. I might quit it and open it again and see, but let's have a look. Does it do it for that as well? I think the answer to that is nil, it doesn't. It depends on the app. It must depend on the app. Okay, so some apps pop up in the tray and say down here, little thing saying um, Origin is now installed, or Dropbox is now installed, others don't. Okay, let's move on. So, tiled apps. Um, this is something that Paul noticed. Uh, as before, when you have the start menu and your tiles are full screen, pretty much, and you are stuck in that screen, and then with the 8.1 update, they put the store icon on the taskbar and you could minimise them down uh, and still be on your desktop at the same time. So they, they tried to make, integrate it a little bit but it didn't really work for a lot of people. Um, so now what they've done is they've made it so you can window your app. So as you can see here, nice. I've, yeah it's pretty cool. I've gone from full screen pretty much down into a windowed mode um, that has really really sort of, uh, you know, really helped the genu you know, general use of the machine. You can see what you're doing. People don't get confused. Businesses will find that a bit easier to use. You know, newcomers to computers will find that easy to use. The user experience is just generally better that way. Because um, it's like transparent. You're not having to keep flicking between a yeah. full screen app and it's not a tablet. You know, at the end of the day, this is a, a full computer it's running on. Um, you know, there's no touch screen. So I guess with touch screens, it's a bit easier. And it is because I use a tablet myself, the surfaces, um, and obviously the phone mobile as well. Um, but yeah, that's that. And the last thing that uh, we want to really cover um, is the start menu and the personalization in here. So first of all you can adjust the size and shape of um, the start menu which I think is quite a nice feature. Um, Paul noticed that, it's pretty cool. Um, that's a nice feature and you can also adjust the size of the tiles as well. So like on Windows 8, say you want to shrink these tiles down a bit so the mail's, mail apps there are a bit too big. Um, you can make them smaller, a bit like on 8, which is pretty cool. We can turn off the live, live tile, make them larger, smaller, which is a really nice feature actually. It makes it um, quite nice to use. It makes it sort of customizable to your sort of tastes and how you want your icons to appear in there and apps, which I think is pretty nice. Um, let's resize them down to small, you know, pretty cool. They're all the same, you can do that. And then finally, I think the last thing we want to sort of touch on is the personalization side. And you can change the colour of your start menu. So it's currently blue to match the sort of taskbar. You can apply different colours to that, which is quite nice, yeah. I guess. Yeah, some people like different colours, so it's quite a nice feature. Colour mixer, so you can change the saturation and things like that. Pretty nice feature. Let's go for a red start menu and taskbar. Look at that. Oh, that's just disgusting, oh. that is. Oh, that's like seeing red. Woohoo! Um, Let's go back to blue, because it looks nicest in blue. <laughs> What's the clear one like? White. Ooh, oh, black! It's grey! Not Crazy. white, is it? Defeats the object there. Oh, well, never mind. So yeah, that's the um, that, that's that's pretty much all the new features we've found so far in, uh, in, in, in Windows 10. Have a nice day! Have a nice day! <laughs> we'll see you next time. See ya! <laughs> <laughs> Scary. Here we go. <laughs> Jake's one off and one. We'll see you next time. See ya! <laughs> <laughs>